Hey up everybody, it's TNG, how the devil are we all doing? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build an immersive church. As ever, if you like the video after watching, please hit that like button, and if you're feeling extra spicy, please consider subscribing too. So first off, this is where I've put my camp down, just near the wayward, but you can place it anywhere you bloody well like. The map is a very big place. So our first step is obviously going to be putting down our foundations. It's going to be four long by three wide. Now we apologise if you can hear mild explosions in the background. It's the day after bonfire night here and people think it's perfectly acceptable to fire off artillery shells by the sounds of it. Yep, it's very distracting, but we're going to plough through it. So for those of you who are not familiar with bonfire night, it's something we celebrate in Britain and it's basically where we set off fireworks and burn shit in honour of a guy that failed to commit treason in the 1600s, I do believe. Yep, really, really strange, I know. So once you've got all your foundations down, this is what you should be left with. So now we're going to conduct witchcraft and make this foundation I've just deleted sit where it shouldn't sit. We're going to grab ourselves a magical cat warts because these things are literally, well, magical. And we're going to use this size here. Can you, can you see it there? We're then going to grab another foundation and snap that onto said catwalk. Mm-hmm, simply, simply lovely. And as you can see, by doing that, this foundation at the front sits perfectly in the middle of the two foundations at the side. It's a really cool little trick, and you can use this on any kind of build that you want. It just saves you from eyeballing everything up. At this point, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I'm just grabbing foundations and pulling them backwards and forwards like they're in a queue on Black Friday. What we're actually supposed to be doing is going round putting down the initial wall pieces. As you can see, I'm using the haunted house set. I know it's designed for, well, a haunted house, the clues in the name. But in my honest opinion, this is the best set we've got for doing law friendly builds. We are going to be adding to this with some of the junk walls and some of the new window slats, but it gives us a good base to start with. So the issue we've got here is these floors are not going to sit right because of that little offset floor piece we've got in the middle there. Basically, it's going to weave us with an awkward gap in floors, and we don't want that, do we? So let's address it. We're going to put down a shack wall on the side of these foundations here. Now make sure it's a shack wall or something with a thin door frame. We're then going to grab the foundation and pull it forward so it snaps to the middle one that we've got sitting there. We're then going to get another shack doorway and snap that to said foundation we've just moved. Now I'm not going to bother wallpapering, but if you did want to do it in your build, just grab the foundation sitting behind the one you've just moved, drag it up to that wall, and then you should be able to flip that piece around. Look at that, you see? Dead simple. We can then drag our foundations back, and that will eliminate our floor gap problem. We can then come to the front of the church and start putting down the final walls. I'm going to use a mixture of shack walls and the haunted house set. So just mix and match it up, you know. It'll give it that little bit more of a scrappy vibe. Mm-hmm. Yep, simply, simply lovely. We'll put down a solid piece and a little one of these vestibule windows. I don't know the name. It's close enough. Close your eyes and pretend you didn't see that gap in the floor. That will be addressed at a later date. Now we're going to start putting some roof pieces down, but only a couple of them don't get excited. So the reason we're doing these particular roofs now rather than later is because it's a lot easier to destroy a roof piece than it is a wall piece. You'll, you'll see what I mean as we get further on in the video. And with that final roof piece, that is this section done. Let's crack on. So let's add a bit more junkiness to this build. We're going to start with this wall here. We're going to grab ourselves a flamethrower trap and we're going to destroy it. So let's just do that now. Beautiful, look at that, you see. We can then get one of our defensive junk walls when I find it in this mess of shit. It is here somewhere. And we can slide that in over our destroyed shack wall. And once we've got it to where it's supposed to be, then we can hit repair on our shack wall and we should have all these tyres and barbed wires sticking out at side of it. And from here on out, really, guys, it's just going round and just adding as much crap to it as you want to do. So we'll start here, we'll change that to a normal window, we'll change this back to a window as well. And then we'll spend roughly three months in the menu trying to find the Slatty Boy 100. You know, them things that we should have got with the Haunted House bundle, but then we had to pay extra for them. Yeah, that's the ones. So now we're just going to go ape shit with them. I'm going to put one on this window here to try and hide the fact we've got a wall running straight down the middle of the window. But in all honesty, guys, you can put these wherever the bloody hell you want. Mm-hmm. Yep, let's just pointlessly replace that doorway for a solid wall and change our mind immediately after. Yep, sounds about right. Stick some more of the Slatty Boys over this window. This is a Slatty Boy 200 though. Notice how it's a bit longer than the 100. That's how you tell the difference. From this point on, you can make this as scrappy or as not scrappy as you want to do. I'm sure there's a better word for not scrappy, but yeah, I don't know it. So let us continue. 
As you can see, I'm speeding up this part because it's just repeating the processes that are used on the other side. Every now and again, I'll throw in some different materials. I'll burn down a wall and throw in a defensive wall, throw some of the slats on, and eventually it will start coming together. Like I say, guys, you can personalize this as much as you want. Just before we move on to the next section, we're just going to put in these little top arches and half walls here. Now, we can't go up too far because we need to do some destruction with the flamethrower trap, but this is literally the final step before we can move on to the steeple. We do have one more step we need to do before we put the steeple on. I mean, I suppose you could do this after you've put the steeple on, but I don't like the idea of having no roof on my church. It just doesn't sit well with me. So this is going to be a basic sloping roof, you know, nothing tricky to it. We're just going to put on these top arches and then go along with normal roofs. Now, it's entirely up to you what roof you want to use. I'm just going to use the bog standard vanilla set, but you could use the asbestos ones. You could even use the haunted house ones if you wanted to, but they were bloody ridiculous. I'm sure in a few months, time Bethesda will come along and sell us normal haunted house roofs without the little dormer window at an extra cost but until that day comes we're just gonna have to soldier through it aren't we I'm not gonna lie though I am a little bit pissed off that we don't have any normal roofs for the haunted house set the texture on them is absolutely fantastic like I said feel free to use them roofs if you want to do but be warned when they're all together they look absolutely bloody ridiculous way too much and it isn't perfect let me tell you anyway moving on swiftly as you can see these little rooms we've got here the old size ones the perfect for putting generators inside of unfortunately i can't up the power up because i've run out of budget so i will be back when i've cleared up that situation okay then budget level is normal i promise you there's wires behind that wall nope there isn't i'm too lazy to put it there let's work on this steeple then we'll put a doorway here obviously we need to get in and we'll top that off with a little half wall we're just going to look at this gap drag the foundation back and then realize we don't need to do that yet and put in another doorway we can then drag this foundation forwards, flip round this doorway, and we've now got the wallpaper side facing inwards. Simply, simply lovely. And just like we did with the front door, we'll top this off with another little half wall piece. Beautiful. So after a quick fucking neow to the outside, we're just going to stand here and bob backwards and forwards like a boxer, admiring our handiwork. Mmm, isn't it lovely? And then we're going to come up to the top and work on our steeple. This is why we put the roofs in first, because it's easier to destroy this with the flamethrower than it would be a wall. And now that we've cleansed that roof piece of its sins, amen, we can go around and put down some half walls. Now, I like to mix and match these pieces. I'm not here, but we'll just pretend I am for the sake of argument. You'll notice the back piece is facing totally the wrong way. I'm going to say it's supposed to be like that. It's not. I'm just lazy. But we'll roll with it. It adds to the immersion. I love that word immersion because it means you can do little errors like that and say that it's part of your build. Brilliant. After we've idled past steeple a little bit like a builder that spotted an office worker, we can jump back up on the roof and finish this bugger off. And we're going to be using the haunted house set doorway because of the little window over the top of it. It gives it that kind of bell tower look. It's the best we've got in the game, so we've just got to make do with it. There you go, you see, not looking half bad in my opinion. All we've got to do now is add a little roof piece to it and just scrappy it up a little bit, you know. Put some, like, shite on it so it matches in with the rest of the build and then we're pretty much there, guys. And with the roof piece on, I'm just going to do what I did downstairs, put some slatty boys on it. Now, I am going to fast forward this bit. You don't need to see me going through the menu for five minutes putting slats on. You get the idea. Just find them, stick them over the doorways, and you'll get the desired effect. Trust me. We have still got to do a graveyard. We have still got to move a few foundations around, but the bulk of it is all done. Oh, yes. Look at that. Dashing. Ha ha. Wonderful. Right. Let's go and fix this roof in here. So we've still not repaired this broken bit here, but that's because we want to put a flat roof in here to stop rain pissing down through it. So while it's destroyed, grab yourself a flat roof, put it in, jobs are good and simple as that. While we're at it, we may as well sort this foundation gap out here. So all you want to do is drag back that foundation to fill the gap in, pop another foundation in front of it, voila. You can then change these walls back into actual walls instead of doorways because we don't need to move any foundations. And that is pretty much the bulk of all the faffing around done, sorted. To finish up this little part here, we're just going to put some of the haunted house steps there. And that gives us like a little entrance where, yeah, you see, look at that. It's actually starting to look like a church. And then it's just a case of going round, checking it all, making sure you're happy with your decoration on it, making sure there's no holes in the wall. Don't know why there would be. But yeah, I think it's finally time to start working on this graveyard and doing a little bit of decoration. What do you reckon? 
This should be pretty simple. You know, it's a graveyard. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just want to get some of these iron fences here. Try and wind them up with the corner of the building as you can. And just build a square enclosure out here. I usually go three long by about three wide. You are restricted here because of the big fucking tree. But just work your way around it. I'll just fast forward this bit. And there we go, a graveyard fence. It should line up pretty well with the corner of the building, but it won't be perfect. So, what do we need in a graveyard other than a fence? Well, we need some bloody graves, don't we? This is quite simple to do. If you bought the gravestones, you know, in that other Halloween bundle that they released after the first 16. If you didn't, then I don't know what to say to you, but I will give you a little bit of a tip. If you did buy the haunted house set, the first one with the walls and whatnot, make a ticket with Bethesda, tell them it's broken, tell them that the pictures fade into the walls, the curtains don't line up with the windows etc etc and nine times out of ten they will give you a refund and i don't even feel bad about telling you this at the end of the day we pay for a product if it isn't right we deserve our money back it's as simple as that and to be honest with you guys i feel kind of guilty because when i reviewed that bundle when it first came out i didn't pick up on any of them bugs so my apologies for that and with them last two gravestones, that is my graveyard pretty much complete. I'm going to throw down some coffins in a second. But yeah, you can add as many as you want or as little as you want. So these coffins that I'm going to put down now, again, they are Atomic Shop. I know there's a bit of a theme developing here. It's getting to the point where decent builds are requiring a lot of Atomic Shop items. I'm not saying there isn't non-Atomic Shop item builds that are good, but they do tend to help out. Let's be honest with ourselves. Church decoration wise, we are pretty limited, but I will say these haunted house floors, which came with the 97th Halloween bundle that Bethesda did, do actually look pretty good. So I'm just going to change all of these over now. And now we've changed all the floors, we can continue decorating. As I said though, we are limited with vanilla items in terms of church decorations. So I'm going to start with this organ. Now this organ is Atomic Shop. What a surprise. This came with the 92nd Halloween bundle they made in October. Or was it the 93rd? I don't know, but we're going to throw it down anyway. Now we've got that down, it's just a case of improvisation. Fortunately, we do get church pews as part of the vanilla game. So I'm just going to put these down at jaunty angles all over the place. And other than an altar, guys, that is pretty much it in terms of churchy items. We don't even have an altar. I tend to use the fancy bar set and just improvise it, you know, wing it a little bit. I wish there was more I can show you. I will cut away now to some footage of it. Slightly more decorated, but not much more decorated. You're just going to have to get creative with it. So I'll catch you in a second. And that is it from me, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I wish I could have shown you more decorating, but I'm not very good at it myself, if I'm honest with you. And I am really limited to what items I could put in this. As ever, guys, if you did like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more weekly Fallout 76 content, please hit that subscribe button too. Go on, you know you want to. No, you probably don't. Anyway, I shall catch you in the next one. Bon chance and have fun.